The Mayo Pro Portugal approaches its conclusion. We're going to have just four surfers left for both men and women's side of the draw. When we wrap this up, our final heat of the day, we'll see two Americans, Colohe and Dino, taking on Griffin, Cola Pinto, two surfers. We know all about what their repertoires can do. Amazing maneuvers between these two, alongside Kaipo Guerrero. And this is during the break, Kaipes. Colohe and Dino. And no problem. That's a full rotation on the back end. Nice air for Andino, the nice way to start his match. Colopinto right behind him on the replay is going to want to match Colohe and Dino. We got this in slow motion, and Griffin Colopinto throws it up, but with a different result. The wind catches it, and that goes incomplete. If you weren't surfing in the quarterfinal, you'd be tempted to maybe spray, try and spray your buddy in the face. It looked almost like he was trying to go for a little bit of that. Uh, this is Colohe and Dino. Long day, a productive day. We've gone through a lot of the draw on both the men's and the women's side. We were able to surf through that low tide that has hampered us on the previous two days because of the swell, angle, direction, and size. Here we go, Griffin. Griff on a big wave, finds the tube. Haven't seen one of those for a little while. Wow, big hit and just overcooks it. And just pushing way too hard as he surfed right past Colohe Andino but did manage to get in the tube early on, and that's a bigger wave as well. Where did that come from? Ah, it was a nice wave for Griffin, and great job of getting behind the curtain there. Opportunity here, and opportunity squandered for Griffin Colapinto. So a great job again at the beginning of this wave, really stalling. Gets the cover up. Squares up, and then just a little too high on this, and... Colapinto breaking away. Yeah, finds himself a corner here, going on the backhand again, and throws up a big punt, oh, oh, oh. and whips it around and gets a really difficult landing done. And that was an air that he didn't have to sort of project down towards. It came at him really quick, that section, and he was good enough to fire up and flare up without loads of notice. And let's get a look, Kaipo. Quick to get on the gas, has to go right up to the lip, spins it around, lands almost horizontally in the whitewater for that last quarter of a rotation for Griffin Cola Pinto. Let's take a look at it. Slow motion, spins it around, uh, lands horizontally and gets, forces that last quarter, that last 90 degrees of rotation of that 360 on the backhand. And I'm going to be curious on what that number is because that was a difficult maneuver on a difficult section. Pretty well positioned for the left was able to get a spicy maneuver done. Let's check out Colohe Andino now on the right hand. A nice smooth on the face and a little sort of lip section. Just sort of feathers for him and offers him up a chance to hit. And again, he'll tag a second section. It goes a little bit wrong. Doesn't get that maneuver done. So not a massive amount of points available for that wave. So if we consider those last two in exchange, certainly Griff Cola Pinto getting the better of that. We're going to take a look at it right here and we're going to see why. First of all, it's a good-looking wave, gets down the line, gets that quick snap, but really wants to punch it at the end. So much effort, so much power, punches it, but that's incomplete, so that's not going to be the score to increase his score line. We can look at it again from up above in some of the beautiful afternoon colors here at Super Tubos, but this incompletion is not going to help Colohe and Dino. The big question is what happened with Griffin Colapinto with that big air that he did a single maneuver that griffin colapinto did on the left that's the real story we know this one's incomplete as we look at it uh, on the replay this is chloe and dino on the replay and it just looks like the rights are he's just fighting a little bit more on the right than griffin colapinto was able to produce on the left that right here which you're watching on this replay a 4.67 for Cola Pinto, I mean for Koloi, pardon me, and uh, so that slightly improved Kolohe's score line, but I really, really see a, a switch in the standings right now when Griffin's number comes in as we finish this replay and come back into live action. Yeah, and what a contrast as well. And meanwhile, out the back in live action, Cola Pinto on the backhand again, off the bottom, tags it nice and hard, just kind of sweeping that board through the lip, belts it one more time. The wave will get weird on the inside, and he navigates troubled waters, and he likes it. It'll improve on his backup, it'll improve on his score.
Well, if the strategy for Kaloya Dino was to go left and hit the big closeouts with the big air, those were not employed. Koloi went right. Right here, we're going to take a look at this. And this is just solid surfing by Colapinto. Really quick feet as he's able to come off the bottom, off the top numerous times. Skips over that hump, no problem. Gets the finish. Griffin Colapinto, we talked about bucking the trend of uh, the advantage, early advantage that we've seen in the other quarterfinals. Griffin Colapinto is doing just that. And this study in slow motion really shows the precision of Griffin Colapinto surfing and the fact that he's able to skip over that one lump and get a finish. He's got plenty of time left to do it. This is a really entertaining quarterfinal, Kaipo. This is, and like we said, the clash of the master versus the apprentice, and there we go. The apprentice taking priority over Chloe and Dino finds another smooth wall on the left, but a bobble there, so priority error for Griffin Colapinto. He has the lead, but now Chloe and Dino has priority and plenty of time on the clock, Paul. And from San Clemente, Coloy and Dino on the left on this slip, spit, split peak. Excuse me, and um, that was not. Welcome back to live coverage in action. We're looking at Griffin Colapinto. He's ripping a wave apart here in late afternoon sunshine out on the west coast of Portugal, looking for a spot in the semi finals. And he attacks multiple sections, gets a small little runner on the inside here, he's got plenty of energy just pushes as he'll go into ankle deep water on the inside so surfed a long wave there he does have pretty solid lead in this one so far 14 minutes just over 20 seconds to go he's gonna go run around here as opposed to trying to paddle back let's get a look and get caught up on replays here Kaipo. Cola Pinto with some great rail work this time on the forehand and he's just skipping out there a little like ollie pop if you would throwing the tail and just staying busy right here. You can already feel the momentum shifting into Colapinto's court. Just watching this ride. He also got himself that seven crucially. Now, what Sandino got here. He's found himself a left heel punt as well, whipping that rotation and just whipping it a little fast, slightly over rotates and he'll go down. And well, the impetus and the priority will shift back to Colapinto in the lead and also now with priority eight and a half to go. Here we go, we're checking out a replay of Griffin Colapinto. Yeah, this happened during the recap. A couple of taps on the backhand for Griffin Colapinto. And a little spin to finish that he goes in complete, no harm, no foul, and not going to really change the situation in this heat. But I always like to see Griffin Colapinto surf in slow motion because it is a, a beautiful application of backhand surfing. It was just this last maneuver. Decide to go for... A little reverse came off on his heels. I guess you can't really train for this kind of stuff, Kaipo, right? You can't really simulate how you're going to be feeling when you're under pressure and you're against the wall. Meanwhile, let's stick with live here from deep. Here goes Griff with a ton of speed, massive air. And why? And he stomps it. That thing was huge. Cola Pinto with an absolute ton of speed finding. A beautiful looking section and going huge and he looks like he's bringing it in he can unbelievable stuff what a showman Griff and cola pinto let's Here's have a look at the replay. the replay and this is the punt yardage full rotation this time and land stomps <laughs> the landing let's take a look at it from above griffin colapinto high up in the sky with the full rotation points the nose back towards the beach completion there and let's take a look and enjoy this punt in slow motion and the air time the hang time the catch the stomp and the ride out for griffin colapinto call it what call it a 10 point ride but he's padding back out towards the lineup where we'll pick up Chloe Andino in live action here looking at a left hander trying to get himself out of a combo of 17 a4 he's got a ton of a speed himself maybe just trying to entertain the crowd massive pun from him doesn't get the rotation done and that'll be it for Chloe Andino so what a cool moment we're witnessing here and in a day that's provided us everything from massive tubes this morning. He didn't have to paddle back out. It was it, the time on the clock and, and the need for Colohi and Dino uh, would, would have not allowed any comeback at that point. But here he goes. Just ride to the beach. Enjoy this one. Griffin Colapinto. He's going to be 
in semi-final number two against John John Florent. Unbelievable matchups for our semis. An unbelievable performance. That perfect 10 gives a huge total of 17.83. Chloe Andino well beaten in that one by a young man who was in absolute form. A cool moment at the end of that as those two have a little handshake. And we saw that little moment with Chloe Andino just licking in and applauding.